I am in the middle of doing the 30 day dovetail challenge. This is where I hand cut a dovetail joint every day for an entire month in an attempt to improve my skills. Today is day 15. Up to today, I've only done practice joints. I've never made a project using dovetails, nor have I ever made anything using hand tools. You see, I have a lot of hand tools, but the truth is I never use them. The power tools in my shop are a lot easier to use and for the most part require a fair amount less effort, so naturally they get the majority of my attention. And as a result of this, my hand tool skills have never properly developed. This is why I'm doing the 30 day dovetail challenge. I don't feel ready to make a project using only hand tools. My joints up to this point haven't been the best. I still have a long ways to go before I would call myself good at cutting dovetails, but I likely never will feel totally ready. So I'm going to force myself to make a basic dovetail pencil box with a sliding lid. Step one in this build is resawing the wood pieces that I'm gonna need to build the box and lid. Resawing is cutting the stock lengthwise along its edge. This creates a thinner piece of stock. I'm using a Japanese pull saw called a Ryoba. This has teeth on both sides, one side for cross cuts, the other for rip cuts. This requires a light touch and ripping this walnut is proving to be way harder than I thought. Here's my first attempt and you can see I ended up with the saw veering off and the piece I cut ended up being way too thin on one end. Now that my stock is cut, I have to flatten and smooth the wood. I'm using a hand plane for this step. This is a lot more enjoyable than resawing. When you hit smooth, clean shavings, it's wildly satisfying. The plane I am using is a Veritas low angle jack plane. It's ideal for shooting miters, working end grain and initial smoothing, which is what I'm doing here. This plane is a treat to use and it's one of those luxury tools that I am glad that I have. Once I get the pieces relatively flat, I set them up next to each other and work on getting them the same thickness. I'm just doing this by feel. Now I have to square up the ends. I'm doing this on a shooting board. This is an easy way to make sure your ends are square and smooth. I'm also using the same method to square the long edge of my stock. I have to cut dados in the side pieces for my box. For this, I'm using a router plane. It has an adjustable fence on it, so I'm able to make consistent straight cuts down the grain. This tool is a little tricky to use. I found that if I set up the blade even a tiny amount too deep, it tears the wood and can cause splinters. But once I got the blade set to the correct depth, the cuts were perfect. I realized I was a piece short. I guess this is the downside of not planning or measuring. So I had to cut myself another piece of wood quickly and square it up. Once I've tested that all my dados fit, I'm ready to cut the ends off using my existing pencil box as a loose reference to set the length of the box where I make the cuts. Now it's time to cut the dovetails. I'm starting out with setting the thickness of the wood with my marking gauge and marking the ends of all the pieces where I'm going to be cutting the pins and tails. After I've marked where the tails go with my dovetail marker, I start making cuts with my Japanese Dazuki saw. This is a pull saw with teeth on one side and a stiff back for making clean accurate cuts. I then take the majority of the waste out with my fret saw and clean up the remainder with my chisels. This time I'm trying a technique I've never tried before, which is clamping a square edged piece of wood down right on the line where I need my chisel to cut to. This should help me keep the chisel oriented perfectly square and result in much cleaner lines. To cut the pins, I'm using a combination of handsaw and chisels. 
It's a delicate process as the pins need to fit perfectly into the tails, but I'm feeling confident after all of my practice joints. There has been a long-standing argument in the woodworking community on whether to cut your pins or your tails first. Uh, I guess you can do either, and ultimately it comes down to what you're comfortable with and what can produce the best finished product. I've always cut my tails first, but I'm not an expert, so probably don't listen to me. Now I'm on to the finishing stages of this box and this is where I try to clean up all of my sloppy cuts and mistakes. I'm using a combo of a card scraper, a block plane, and 220 grit sandpaper. This is usually the part of any project where I realize that I didn't do a very good job and I need more practice. But also, this is practice. My dovetails on this box are pretty gappy. I had some wood chip out when I was chiseling and that's what you see me filling with the black CA glue. I'm using clear CA glue and some sawdust to fill minor gaps in the joinery. And there are rough spots all around the box from where I could have planed more. However, if I had planed more, I would have run out of wood. My point being, this, is, this box is on par with a mediocre middle school shop project. And that is okay. It was my first attempt at making anything using only hand tools, but the point is that I did it. Even though it isn't perfect, it will still hold pencils. It doesn't need to be perfect. The point of this challenge is just to do the thing, build the skills, gain the confidence to move forward on my 30 day dovetail challenge so that I can make larger, more complicated projects with my hand tools in the future. I went into this project unsure if I had the skill set to complete it. Even though it's as simple a project as you can do with hand tools, the room for error is large and enough bad mistakes can quickly multiply and lead to an abandoned project. Even though this pencil box isn't impressive in terms of quality or skill level, it's one of the things that I've made that I felt the most rewarding because I didn't think I was ready for it.